Now that we've recapped some of the basic concepts of simple linear regression, we're going to look at fitting the model with an R and interpreting some of its parts. So to do so, we're going to model the relationship between a Y variable or an outcome of FEV, right, this is a measure of length capacity, and an X variable or explanatory variable of height. So first, let's make a plot of FEV versus height. So here's the data that we want to fit a linear regression model to. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to fit a model and save it in an object called MOD1. To do so, I'm going to use the LM command, right, the linear model, estimate FEV using height. Now, let's take a look at a summary of that model. So we can see here that the fitted regression model is the FEV, right, the estimated FEV or the estimated length capacity is equal to negative 5.43 plus 0.13 times height. Model's intercept is negative 5.43. The model slope is 0 0.13. Now let's quickly remind ourselves of the interpretation of those. The slope of 0.13 tells us that when height increases by one inch, we'd expect the FEV to increase by about 0.13 liters. And again, there's a lot of different ways to state this interpretation. The interpretation of the model's intercept is that when the height is zero inches, we'd expect the mean lung capacity to be negative 5.43 liters. Now again, this isn't a meaningful interpretation, and that's largely because we haven't observed data in the range of height of zero or in fact, we can't have someone with a height of zero. But this is the direct interpretation of the intercept. And we had talked previously about the idea of centering variables, right? So we can center the height variable if we want to give the intercept a more meaningful interpretation. We can see there the residual standard error of 0 0.4307, right? And this gives us, it's not quite correct mathematically to say this, but it's close enough to think of it that way, that this is the average error or the average residual, right? On average, how far are individuals FEV getting from the regression line? We can see the multiple R squared of 0.7537. Again, this has the interpretation as the percentage of variability in Y explained by our model. So about 75% of variability in FEV can be explained by the height. So let's move on to adding the regression line to that plot. To do so, there's a few ways we can do it. We're gonna use the AB line command. Okay, and this is actually A, B. A is the model intercept, or the line's intercept. B is the line's slope. So in the case of simple linear regression, we can use the A, B line, and then tell R we want to add the line from model one. Okay, and it will extract the intercept and the slope for that model. So I'm going to do that with a color of blue, and LWD is line width. So line width of three, just add a, a thick line there. And I just want to show you also we noted that the intercept for the model was negative 5.432 and the slope was 0 0.1319. So we can also add the line by specifying the intercept and the slope for the line. Okay, so I'm gonna do that here and I'm gonna make the line red. I just wanna show you that it produces the same line. A few quick commands to uh, remind ourselves of. If we want to get just the model's coefficients, we can ask them using the COEF command. This is asking for the coefficients of model one. Or we can also say model one dollar sign COEF. Go into model one and extract the coefficients. We can add a 95% confidence interval around the estimates of the model slope and the model intercept using the confint command. And just a slightly neater way to present it, I'm going to use the C bind or the column bind command to bind these together column wise. So if we look at that here, we can now see we have the, the model coefficient or the slope for height is 0 0.13, and we're 95% confident it's between 0 0.126 and 0 0.137. I'm gonna skip past this part about centering here, um, but you can work through that on your own if you want. It's just a reminder of how models work if we center a variable or if we try standardizing a variable. We've talked a lot about the assumptions for simple linear regression previously, as well as in a whole separate video. For now, I just wanna quickly recap what the assumptions are and then we'll look at ways of trying to address violations in the assumptions. So the first assumption is that there's a linear relationship between y and x, okay, that a line can accurately represent the relationship between the two variables. We assume that the observations are independent, that person one, person two, person three are all independent of each other, and so on. We assume that observations are normally distributed around the regression line, as well as variance around the regression line is equal or constant. 
Before taking a look at the regression diagnostic plots, which we're going to remind ourselves of, in which we have a whole separate video talking extensively about checking the assumptions of simple linear regression, let's take a look at this plot and see what we think about those assumptions. First, the linear assumption. Now, I would say when looking at this plot, it looks a little bit non-linear. But if we look, it seems like the relationship is curving upwards slightly. Independent observations, that one cannot be checked statistically. That requires knowledge of study design and data collection. Normality, again, it's hard to see normality in this plot, but we're trying to see do points look symmetrically scattered above and below the line. And equal or constant variance. Again, I would say that assumption does not look met. If we see down here, there's not that much variability. Up here, there's a lot more variability. Okay, so it looks like variation is increasing as we progress up the regression line. Now let's look at plots to check those assumptions. And we talked about why we need plots. Right? When we get to multiple linear regression with multiple x variables, we can't just look at a simple scatter plot to decide if the assumptions seem to be met or not. We can use the plot command to produce the diagnostic plots. And we can see here, looking at the residual plot, the first is we can see this sort of megaphone shape in the residual plot, which suggests there's increasing variability. There's much more variability up here right, at the higher predicted values than there are down here. We can also see there's a bit of curvature right, in this red line or the smoothing of the residuals, which again suggests there's a bit of a non-linearity or a bit of a curved relationship in that scatter plot. Now this is the main plot we want to look at to check the assumptions. We can also look at the QQ plot here. This helps us check normality. Right? The points fall roughly on this diagonal line. The data looks normal enough. We also talked a bit about how the normality assumption is not such a big or important assumption, provided we have a, a large enough sample. Now this here, the scale location plot, this is very similar to the um, residual plot we were looking at previously. We can notice here on the y-axis as the absolute value, okay, it's kind of hard to see there, but the absolute value of the standardized residuals, and then the square root of that. And along here, there's the fitted values. So let's take a look at the residual plot we were previously looking at. Here it was the fitted values versus the residuals. Okay, so that, that other plot we were just looking at had the absolute value of the residuals. So I like to think of that as roughly taking this plot and folding, folding it along the zero line, right? This residual down here of roughly about negative two, when we take the absolute value, it's gonna be roughly about positive two, right? So I think of it as being similar to this plot, but taking it along the zero line and folding all those negative points upward. If we do that, what are we gonna see? If we fit a trend line to that, it's going to increase, right? There's increasing variance. And if there's a lot of scatter here, we fold it above the zero line, they're going to be sitting high up here, right? These which don't have much scatter around the zero line, when we fold them up, they're not going to be sitting very high. Okay, there's going to be an upward trend. Okay, and that's what we can see here, right? We can see when we look at the absolute value of the standardized residuals, it's drifting upward or showing there's a bit of increasing variability. Okay, and the final plot, which we hadn't talked much about and we're not gonna talk that much about. Um, this helps us identify um, influential points, high leverage points and things like that, a topic that we're not really getting very deep into in our course. Okay, so let's just take a look at the scatter plot of our data again. Here is the plot and let's add in the regression that, that we fit. And now we're gonna take a break. We're gonna go back to a video of me talking about um, different violations of the regression assumptions and possible solutions we have to address those violations. In particular, ways of addressing nonlinearity, as well as ways of addressing increasing or non-constant variance. So we'll talk a bit about that, and then we'll come back to implementing some of those in R.